Did you know that 9 is more than 8? I know, surprising, isn't it? Wait, you already knew that one? Okay, well, did you know that that math is actually responsible for one of my favorite half-bit hacks in all of Redstone? That's right, today we are doing more computational Redstone the questionably useful but funny way. And today's subject is one of my favorite ways to use half-bits in all of Redstone, which I call the ternary hack. But first of all, what even is a half bit? Well, to halfway answer your question, a bit is just a zero or a one, or at least that's how we often look at it. But you can also look at it as a short way to describe the number of possibilities. For example, one bit refers to having two possibilities, while four bits refers to having 16 possibilities. In general, the number of possibilities is always just two to the power of the number of bits that you have. If you want to get even more philosophical, you could also look at the number of bits as simply how precise something is. 4 bits is a much more precise specification than just 1 bit. So, instead of saying that a file takes up 1 kilobyte, you could also say that it is precise enough that there are this many alternative things that are equally precise. Which is a very good example of why we generally like to just work with bits instead. But you'll notice here that in both cases, the number of bits is a power of two, and generally we like it to stay that way when working with computation stuff. We prefer it when the number of possibilities is a power of two. But what if it isn't? In such a situation, you're able to specify more information than you otherwise could, just not quite enough to constitute an entire extra bit. So that makes it a half bit, right? Well, actually, yes. Except it's actually slightly more than half a bit, but in the special case of an option out of three, I tend to just refer to it as one and a half bits. And yeah, in general, you get partial bits whenever the number of options is not a power of two. But due to the fact that there are not a whole lot of numbers between one and two, this generally means that you don't find half bits on their own, making one and a half bits corresponding to three possibilities the simplest case. Except, actually, that's not entirely true. If you dig deep enough into information theory, it is possible to get half bits on their own, but we're not going to talk about that today. So that's where half bits come from, but can we do anything with them? Imagine we're building some sort of redstone computer, and we want to store the information using buckets, specifically buckets of water, lava, and air. And yes, I know we could just add milk or something, but just, just go with it. Well, that is three options, which, as we just talked about, is one and a half bits. But in order to make it actually useful for our computer, uh, well, it kind of has to only work with full bits in the end. Even if it uses half bits on the inside, it has to store whole bits only. Well, in that case, even though it would take two bits to store the state of a bucket, a bucket cannot itself store two bits. It can only store one. But here's the thing. If you're storing information, you're probably not just going to have a single cell of memory, but rather an entire array of memory cells. So what happens if we, instead of looking at them as individual buckets, we look at them in pairs? There are a total of nine possible pairs of buckets that we could have. But if you remember, nine is at least eight, which means that this is theoretically enough possibilities to store three bits, which is one more bit than we would normally get if we looked at the two buckets individually. And that's pretty much the main party trick of half bits. When you combine them together, you actually do get an entire extra bit that you would not have had otherwise. So while pretending that the third option doesn't exist is definitely the easier solution, which often does translate to the more practical solution when referring to inanimate objects that just serve as tools. Not when talking about people, though. We're not necessarily here for the practical answer, and ignoring half bits is lost potential, even if combining them together is more work. Oh right, forgot to mention that while it is possible to combine half bits together, it's not exactly free. Uh, yeah, oops. So in that case, how exactly do we combine half bits together? Well, in short, we have to convert between binary and ternary. I mean, we have three bits versus two ternary digits. Yeah, just got to convert between the two bases. 
most obvious way to do that would just be with the regular positional number formats. You know, just most common way to encode these numbers, you know, just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, but then 8, well, there, that's a 4-bit number, but it's still a 2 ternary digit number, so that just doesn't get used. So when we actually build the redstone, uh, that can end up getting converted to anything and it'll be fine. Which also means that while you could store 3 bits in a pair of ternary digits, you can't go the other way, there's just not enough possibilities. But either way, how do we actually go about making that conversion? First of all, we're probably going to be using binary coded ternary. That's where we just make each ternary digit a pair of bits, where pretty much the only restriction is that within each pair of bits, they can't both be a 1 at the same time. And doing that, it'll look a little something more like this. But unfortunately, this conversion isn't like completely straightforward. There's a bit of complicated logic that you'd have to do in order to make it work. But we don't necessarily need to do that. If the only point in converting between bases is to just temporarily store a number in a different base so that it can be converted back, it does not matter what encoding you use. Like, we could just go ahead and swap these two entries, it's still a perfectly valid encoding, just as long as we still use the same one for both binary to ternary and ternary to binary. So if the exact encoding doesn't really matter, let's see if we can come up with an encoding that takes as little logic to implement as possible. To start off with, we can try and take advantage of the fact that we're converting between binary and binary coded ternary, so, well, I mean, one of the differences is just with the binary, we have three bits, and with the binary code of ternary, there's four. So what if we just add on a zero and then hope for the best? And that actually works in the majority of cases. The only times it doesn't work is when the final two bits here are both a one. As, well, that's pretty much the one thing about binary code of ternary. Within each pair, they can't both be a one at the same time. So we'll have to come up with some other way to handle these two cases. But haven't we used up all of our options? Well, no, not quite. If you look closely, you'll notice that of all of the ternary pairs we've used so far, even the invalid ones, the first digit is always either 0 or 1, which means all of the cases that start with a 2 are still up for use. So what if we just say that, all right, when the ternary pair starts with 0 or 1, you just don't do anything. You just convert it directly across. But if it starts with a 2, then that just means that the final two bits are going to be a 1, because that's the only thing that you couldn't get otherwise. And then as for the third bit, we can just copy this one. So yeah, overall, very simple. To convert from ternary to binary, first of all, you just look at the first bit. If it's 1, then it's just that final bit followed by two ones. Otherwise, if it starts with a 0, then it's just the remaining three bits. And then meanwhile, going back the other way, you just look at this pair right here. If they are both ones, then it's just 1, 0, 0, and then that first bit. Otherwise, it's just a 0 followed by the three bits. And of course, this isn't the only way to do it. You can like rearrange bits and invert them if it's more efficient. So yeah. As for putting this into redstone, uh, I, I actually don't know how efficient this is. I kind of threw it together in like an hour or two because I could have sworn I had a better version lying around in one of my worlds between Java and Bedrock, but I could not find it. So uh, yeah, but it's fairly decent. We also have a couple of NAND gates here, just to make sure that it really is ternary, because if both of these turn on at the same time, the lamp will turn off, signaling that this is not a valid binary coded ternary number. But yeah, from there, yeah, just going through all of the different possibilities, we'll see that the signal always makes it across, and it's never an invalid case. Of course, you're probably not going to have this be just like a pair of wires. You're probably going to have it go into some sort of esoteric number storage system and then convert it back to binary later. 
As for any sort of practical use, um, well, again, maybe not practical to begin with, but in theory, it could be useful for music discs, as there are exactly 12 renewable music discs, so that's basically just a ternary digit followed by two more bits, and that means that even in survival, you aren't limited to just three bits per music disc. If you're really desperate, you can go up to three and a half. Though, when you really think about it, that is a very specific situation to be in. Now, real quick, I just wanted to say thank you all for helping me reach 1,000 subscribers. It's, like, super awesome. You guys are very awesome. And as a little bit of a reward, I'm actually going to let you guys in on something that's been going on with the channel this whole time. It's no secret that I like to put easter eggs in a lot of my videos, but what's not very well known is that in some videos I like to put a special kind of easter egg that I like to call a golden egg. These easter eggs tend to be a lot more difficult to find, but they often end up being some of my favorites, which is a shame, because not a single one of them has actually been found. So yeah, just figured I would let you guys in on that little detail so that you know to look out for them in case you want to. Um, yeah, if you find one, you'll get a shout out in a video, and also I will be keeping a playlist of all of the videos where the golden egg has yet to be found. Anyways, that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. World downloads for both Java and Bedrock are in the description. But most important of all, Transvisor Human Rights.